All right, so the first thing that we want to look at today together is the start page. Because that's not only where you start out with your fresh ideas, it is also the place where you can go to look at finished productions that were entirely done in Studio One and see for yourself at your own pace how the artists got to the result that you're hearing in the end. Not only is that so much more fun than studying a manual, except you're like me who <laughs> has no life and enjoys these things, but it's also very effective because if you're coming from another door, you will always start looking for the workflows that you've grown accustomed to. But many things are done in a very unique and cool way in Studio One, like folder tracks. And if you have an example to see immediately how they can be utilized, this is so much better than trying to figure this out for yourself. All right, so here we go. That's Studio One start page. Most of you might be familiar with it already, but if you're new to Studio One or you just haven't paid too much attention to it yet, let's just talk over it in a little bit of detail and then go from there. So first we find the option to create a new song here um, and you see a variety of different interfaces pre-configured already, which is highly useful. So if you have like a quantum, like me right now, and I would hit OK, I would get a template that has the exact number of inputs armed and ready to record as you find on the quantum, which is super useful to get going right away with, say, a multi-track recording and things like that. Next to it, we have a couple of styles, like preset styles uh, that we prepared as a template for you, all highly useful and playable to get started making music right away. And the third tab here is the user templates tab, where you can basically create your own templates from scratch. Like my default template here, it has all kinds of effects and folder tracks prepared and ready to go for me. And every time I would go about starting a new song, I would just load that up. Then in the middle we have our artist profile. This is actually uh, me from a gig with my modular synthesizer friends. And uh, the tag that you see here is actually what's been written by default into the ID3 tag, meaning the meta information of every file that I'm rendering every MP3. Moving right along, next to that we have the SoundCloud tab over here. And that is really cool if you're using SoundCloud because not only can you see all your recent tracks and activities here, I don't have any recent activities right now, but if I would, then it would show up. I was just too <laughs> busy with workshops and presentations for Studio One. But you can also upload directly to SoundCloud with the top left button over here. And that is an extremely cool feature if you're taking advantage of SoundCloud. Right underneath, you can directly access all your relevant audio interface settings. And we also got a nifty little improvement with Studio One version 4.5 in this regard. You see, if you have a song open in the background, like me right now, you can click on Song Setup. And once you've done that, you see all your inputs and outputs like previously. But now you can also assign different colors so you find the inputs easier. You can manually drag and drop the order around. And you can even import and export different input and output settings. And that is huge because if you're collaborating with a friend or a colleague, you probably had the experience that they used a different audio interface or a different sound card than you. They had different inputs and outputs. Maybe they made the beat with the laptop where they only have like a built-in microphone, a stereo microphone and their speakers. And then you have to reassign everything to match your quantum or whatever audio interface you have. Well, now it's just one single click and that saves you super much time. Next to that, we have our RSS and newsfeed, and this gets updated constantly. Such a good place to go to check out loops and samples and also find out what's next for Studio One. And then we have the demos and tutorials tab here, and I've talked about that a little bit before. And I think this is such a good way of learning Studio One because I could just click on this track here by Catfire, Sakura, really an amazing track to study how the chord track works. And then just at my very own pace, you know, zoom in, go into each and every channel, you know, see what kind of sound effects he used or what kind of inserts, what kind of um, settings he used to get that awesome sound in the end. And I can just study it at my own pace, find out, oh, a folder track is not just a folder track. I could also assign a bus to it. And now it's also a bus track. These kind of things, you know, finding it out this way at your own pace is so much more fun than considering a manual. Of course, I'm gonna take you through all these features that I'm barely scratching the surface of in depth. I don't wanna to put too much in this episode. This is just so you get an overview on the start page, but we're gonna to get to all the fun stuff, I promise. So this is the start page. This is where you should go first when you open up Studio One. Check it out and I'll see you in the next episode.